Okay class, picking up where we left off. We did problem 30 in our last video and now we're on problem 31. Now we multiply. We have 0 0.3 times 0 0.08. We drop those decimals and we're left with we will have here 3 times 8. 3 times 8 is 24. Now we count how many digits we have behind the decimal. We have 1, 2, 3 digits behind the decimal. But we only had 2 digits here. So we add a 0 in front and our decimal and our final answer be 0 0.024. Now we go down here to number 32. We have a positive times a negative. Now we know a positive times a negative is negative. So let's drop our decimals and multiply. We have 73 times 22. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times 3 is 6. First we have to add our 0 here. And 2 times 3 is 6. And 2 times 7 is 14. Now we add them together. We add 6. This is 10. Carry our 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. Plus 1 is 6. And we bring down our 1. Now we count how many digits we have behind the decimal. We have two digits behind the decimal, so we have to have two digits behind the decimal. And remember, this was a positive times a negative, so your final answer should be negative, 16.06. .06. Now we go to problem 33. We have 4.8 times 1,000. Now remember, this is a power of 10, so we count how many zeros we have behind the 1. We have 3. So now we have to move this decimal three places to the right. So we could write out 4.8 and move this decimal one, two, three places. And we'll put zeros here. So our final answer here would be 4,800. Now we scroll down here to number 34. We have 5.5 .5 times 0 0.01. This is still a power of 10. We count how many decimal, how many digits we have behind the decimal. We have two. So that means we must move this decimal to the left two places. So we'll write down our 5.5 .5 and move it two places to the left. And that would give us 0 0.055. And that is our final answer. Now we go to problem 35. We are to combine like terms. Now we have 8.6x and then minus 7.7x because remember we always carry the sign that is in front of the term. So we could go off to the side here and 8.6x minus 7.7x. Now when we subtract that we have our x. We cannot subtract 7 from 6 so we borrow 1 from the 8. So this 6 becomes 16. 16 minus 7 is 9. Bring down your decimal. And 7 minus 7 is 0. Now that took care of our x's. Now the, number, now the terms without x. We have 15.5 minus 1.3. And we line up those decimals. 5 minus 3 is 2. Bring down our decimal. 5 minus 1 is 4. Then we bring down our 1. Now our final answer is the 0.9x is positive, so we'll write 0.9x. This 14.2 is positive, so we'll put plus 14.2. And we combine the like terms here. Now, we scroll down here. We go down here to problem 36. Now, in problem 36, it says find the circumference of the circles. Use 3.14 for pi. Now, remember, right here, we have the radius because remember the radius goes from the center of the circle to one of the ends of the circle. So we'll use the circumference formula using a radius which is 2 times pi times the radius. So now we have 2 times we're told that pi is 3.14 and remember that's an approximation and your radius is 8 inches. Now we can multiply this out. Now what I probably would do, because we could use the commutative property here, I probably would take the 2 times the 8 and make this 16 times 3.14.
Now we can go off to the side and multiply this out. We'll make 3.14, 314, and multiply it by 16, because we'll drop those decimals. 6 times 4 is 24, carry a 2. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. 6 times 3 is 18. Now we write our 0 here. 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 3 is 3. And we add them together. So we have 4. 8 plus 4 is 12. We carry our 1. 1 plus 8 is 9. Plus 0 is 10. And carry our 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Plus 3 is 5. So now we have to count how many digits we have behind the decimal. We add two digits behind the decimal. So it will be 50.34. So our circumference is 50.24 and it's inches. And that's our circumference. Now with 37, this time we have the diameter. Remember the diameter goes from one end of the circle to the other and it goes through the center of the circle. So we we'll use the diameter formula. Circumference is equal to pi times diameter. And I meant to say we will use the circumference formula that utilizes diameter. So we have the circumference is equal to pi is still 3.14. and the diameter is 9.5 and we could put the yards in there It's 9.5 yards okay now we can go off to the side here and multiply we could drop these decimals we could take 314 times 95 5 times 4 is 20 carry your 2 5 times 1 is 5 plus 2 is 7 5 times 3 is 15 we add our 0 here. 9 times 4 is 36. We carry our 3. 9 times 1 is 9 plus 3 is 12. Carry our 1. 9 times 3 is 27 plus 1 is 28. And we add that. This is 0. 7 plus 6 is 13. Carry your 1. 1 plus 5 is 6 plus 2 is 8. 1 plus 8 is 9. And we bring down our 2. Now we count how many digits we have behind the decimal here. We have one, two, three digits behind the decimal. So it would be 29.830. So we'll write the circumference as 29, and we can say 0.83, and that's yards. And remember, it's very important that we put our units of measure. Now we go here to problem 38. We want to divide. So first of all, when we divide with decimals, we know we must move this outside decimal as many places to the right as we need in order to make this into an integer. That means a number without the decimal. So we move this one place to the right. So this would be 24. And remember, however many places we move it out here, we must move that same amount of places in here. So this would be 24 and 108. So let's see. Let's put a decimal and a zero here just in case we need it. We'll bring this decimal up here. Now we would take 24 into 108, which only goes four times. Four times four is 16. Four times two is eight plus one is nine. Now 108 minus 96 leaves us 12. And we'll bring down our zero. Now, we can show the steps. 8 minus 6 is 2. We cannot subtract 9 from 0. So we borrow 1 from the 1, which makes that 0. And the 0 becomes 10. 10 minus 9 is 1. Now we have 120, because we bring down the 0. And the answer we put here would be, would be behind the decimal. 24 goes into 120 five times. 5 times 24, 5 times 4 is 20. Carry a 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 2 is 12. 120 minus 120 is 0. So our final answer here is 4.5. Now we go here to 39. 39 is basically set up like 38. Except for we need to change it in this form here. So we will have 1.5 into 333. 
Now we have to move this decimal one place to the right here. And we know it's assume it's a decimal behind this last three. And we'll put it, we'll, we'll move the decimal one place to the right. And that will give us 3,330. So we have 15 into 3,330. And let's put a point zero there. Bring our decimal up. 15 goes into 33 twice. 2 times 15 is 30. Now we bring down this 3 here. 15 goes into 33 twice. 2 times 15 is 30. And 33 minus 30 is 3. And we bring down our 0. 15 goes into 30 2 times. 2 times 15 is 30. Now we have nothing else to really divide by. So we could actually put our answer as just 222. That is our final answer for number 39. Now I need to carve this out a little bit. Now this goes with problem 39. Now we go to problem 40. First of all, we have a negative divided by a negative, which we know is positive. Now this is 0 0.03, which is the same as 0 0.03. So we add 0 0.03. And that goes into 0 0.69. Now we don't have to write the negatives because we know it's going to be positive. So here we move the decimal two places to the right. And we move this decimal two places to the right. So we will have 3 into 69. Now we could put the point 0 there as a just in case measure. 3 goes into 6 twice. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0, so we bring down our 9. 3 goes into 9 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9. Now, we don't have anything left over, so we don't have to go behind the decimal. So our final answer here would just be a positive 23. And that's it. Okay, now, we scroll down here. We go here to problem number 41. Now, what we want to do here is we want to determine that this is less than, greater than, or equal between a pair of numbers to form a true statement. Now, we have this decimal here, 0 0.365. We need to change this 23 over 63 into a decimal to compare them. So we add 63 into 23. I suggest we go four decimal places, at least one more than what's shown here. 63 goes into 23 zero times. 63 goes into 230 three times. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 6 is 18. Now we know we cannot subtract 9 from 0. So we'll make this 3 a 2. And then this 0 will become 10. 10 minus 9 is 1. We cannot subtract 8 from 2. So we borrow 1 from this 2. And this 2 will become 12. 12 minus 8 is 4, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So now we bring down this 0 here. 63 goes into 410, let's see, 6 times. 6 times 3 is 18, carry a 1. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 1 is 37. Now, we cannot take 8 from 0, but we can take 1 from this 1 here. So that would be 0. And this 0 will be 10. 10 minus 8 is 2. We cannot take 7 from 0. So we borrow 1 from this 4. And this 0 will become 10. So we add 10 minus 7 is 3. So that's 32. We'll bring down another 0. 63 goes into 320 five times. 5 times 3 is 15. Carry a 1. 5 times 6 is 30 plus 1 is 31. 320 minus 315 leaves us 5. We'll, put, we'll bring down this 0. 63 goes into 50 0 times. So we add another 0. 63 goes into 500. And I have to go in, what's that, 7 times. Now we could stop here. We don't have to do any more subtraction. If you look here, 0 0.36507 is larger than 0 0.365, so this is greater than.